Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm, uh, thanks for joining this session. I'm Xin Zhen from uh, Intel QT team, and that's my colleague Yi Liu from Intel virtualization team. So today, today we would like to uh, share with you how do we enable uh, Intel scalable capable device into Linux. So this is our agenda today. Before we jump into the enabling uh, activities for the scalable IV capable device driver, we would like to uh, recap the Intel scalable IV technology. And also, uh, I would like to introduce the software architecture in the Linux. And then, then the most important part, how do we enable the scalable IV capable device driver in Linux? And my colleague Yi e will share with you how do we bring the virtual shared virtual address technology on top of a, a scalable capable virtual device. Okay, so uh, let's recap the Intel scalable technology. So Intel scalable te technology is public uh, in 2018 by Intel, and it introduced a uh, passive granular uh, DMA isolation capability and also the final uh, <coughs> assignable hardware resource. So in the software side, the Intel Scalability technology leverage current uh, mediative device framework and to and mediate, mediate the access to the hardware. So move the in infrequent access to the hardware uh, from the hardware to the, to, to, the, to the software. So let's take a look at the diagram in the right side. The, it's a SRV solution versus the scalable solution. In a typical SRV solution, as a virtual function is a PCI device, so we can pass through this device to the guest directory. But in the scalable way, we introduce a software module, virtual device composition module. This module will compose the virtual device on top of the uh, minimal assignable uh, hardware resource and pre uh, compose this device to the guest. Uh, we can see uh, the red, red, red point is the highlight. Uh, the, it's, it's the, when the device is assigned, when the virtual device is composed, all the, all the hardware requests will, will uh, all upstream requests will tagged with a passive. So if, if we combine the software framework and the hardware technology together, we can get the benefit from hardware. That's, uh, we can get the hardware enforced DMA isolation capability. And also, we can enjoy the flexi flexibility and the scalability from the software framework. Okay, let's see uh, what's new in the hardware. So, the first one is uh, the, in, in, the, in the platform side, the, IMU, the Intel VTD will introduce a new scale mode to support the passive granular DMA isolation capability. And in the device side, we can see in the diagram, we can see a typical virtual device is composed of a virtual config configuration space and virtual bar, also the virtual interrupt. And in the, uh, in, in the inter interrupt side, the Intel Scalable will also introduce a new concept, IMS, interrupt message storage, to overcome the, uh, the number limitation of the MSI brains. As, as we all know, the MSIX only support 2048 vectors, but for ADI, one physical function may, might have more than 200, uh, uh, 2048 ADIs, so, you know, to, to uh, over, overcome this issue. And for the uh, Intel Scalable Cable device, it also needs to present the hardware capability in, in the device, and passive capability is also required. Uh, let's see, let's take a look at the, the diagram to see uh, what's the software architecture in Linux. So as, as I mentioned just now, uh, Intel Scalable Technology leverage current mediative device framework, but we also need an uh, enhancement, that's an uh, IMU available mediative device. And we, in the device side, we need a device uh, specific, device composition uh, module. So we call it VDCM. And also for the IMM driver, we also need to enhance them to support the scalable mode. 
Uh, that, but yeah, uh, there is another point is that uh, IRQ domain, we also need to introduce uh, I, IAM's domain in, in, into the IRQ. Uh, in the cumulative side, as, as we also leverage the current mediated uh, pass-through approach, so for cumulative, it's agnostic to the entire scalable uh, virtual device pass-through. In the gear side, we also need to introduce a virtual device driver for the, for the new composed virtual device. So let's see uh, how to design the virtual device comp composition module. So firstly, you need to determine the virtual device types. For example, what's the service your virtual device should provide? How many ADIs the, 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 the virtual device should be composed? And also the second step, you need to organize all the virtual device resources. And the virtual device, a typical virtual device should com be composed of virtual config space and virtual bar regions. The virtual configuration space should be emulated by the VDCM. And for the virtual bar, we split the access to the virtual device into two paths. One is the fast path and the other is the slow path. In the fast path side, you know, like some uh, work submission interface. So it also, it, it's usually uh, some uh, MMI register in the PF. And in the slow pass, it's also some configuration and, and control register uh, for this, for this uh, virtual device. And also, this fast pass and slow pass can also be backed uh, by some memory. In the interrupt, as, as I just said, for each ADI, they, have, uh, they, might, they, they could have some uh, uh, hardware interrupt, which can be posted to the guest, uh, guest directory if the platform support the post-interrupt capability. And also, VDCM can, can emulate the virtual interrupt and inject it to the virtual machine. So let's see uh, what's, how, how do we design the, virtual uh, the communication channel between the virtual device and the VDCM. Typically, we have two approaches. One is hardware-based, just like some uh, uh, traditional PFVF communication. In the, you, you can see that very often in the SRV solution. And in the, uh, we, we have another approach, is the software-based uh, mechanism. You can use some memory backed to, uh, to emulate the virtual MMI and present this to a guest. Finally, you need to use leverage the mediated device framework to compose and manage all the virtual device. Okay, let's see uh, how, after we in, uh, introduce uh, how do we, enable, uh, how do we uh, design the virtual device composition module. So let's see how do we, uh, how do we manage the virtual device with uh, virtual device composition module for the scalable uh, capable device. It, it, in general, it leverages the mediated device framework, but for the scalable capable device, we also need to take care of some, uh, some, some hardware-specific points. So for a virtual device, it, uh, the life cycle can be divided a couple of uh, stages. The first one you need to create and then assign this device to the user-based process or the virtual machine. And you can uh, get long-time access to the virtual device. And, Another very important part is a reset. How do we reset this virtual device in a guest or in a host? And after the virtual device uh, is, is reset or we, we don't want to use this anymore, we can remove this virtual device. And also, before we, we remove, we need to release the device. Okay. So all these operations will be reflect to the, will be routed to the VDCM. So let's see uh, how, how do VDCM handle the scalable specific operations. So in, in, in for the create, the user just need to create the virtual device through the six file system engine. And this, this operation will be routed to VDCM. VDCM to, to response this, this operation. VDCM need to invite, uh, invoke the MDEV set MMU device to indicate via file, this is a mediative device as well. This is MMU as well, mediative device. And for the uh, scalable cable device, it also needs some uh, IMS IRQ. It, it needs to request the uh, uh, interrupt vector from the IMS IRQ domain. And finally, it also needs to allocate all the ADIs to compose the virtual device and set up all the resource, compose this device and present to the, uh, return this device to the uh, mediative core driver 
a medieval core driver will uh, create an entry in the sys file system. Okay, after the device is created, we need to assign this device to the user space process and all the virtual machine. So typically we have a couple of, uh, of uh, flows, uh, open, octo, and memory map. This, this will be uh, routed to VTCM as well. For the scale variable capable virtual device, in the open operation, we should query the default person from the IMU auxiliary domain. And we also need to program this person to, uh, to hardware. And for the uh, Octo, you know, we have a couple of uh, uh, operations comes with Octo operation. So to respond to this, we, we need to operate the hardware specific operation. For example, to, uh, to program the interrupt vector to the IMS table and to handle the virtual device reset. And for the memory map, it's, it's just like some uh, uh, typical uh, MDEV operations. We, we, we need to map the fast path we already designed for this virtual device to the, to the user. Oh, for the runtime access, as, as, I, as I mentioned just now, we, we split into two parts. We, we split access into two parts. One is fast path and the other is, is slow path. For the fast path, they, they will be routed to the, the ADI directory. For, for the slow path, uh, the VDCM should be emulate all, all this access. And only uh, another important part for the device is in, in, in the interrupt. So one is for one is the hardware interrupt, which, which, uh, which can be posed to the guest directory if the platform support the post interrupt capability. And for uh, the virtual interrupt, the VDCM should emulate the interrupt and inject it to the virtual machine. Oh, let's talk about the reset. How do we reset a virtual device? You know, the reset comes with the octo operations, and to, uh, to respond to this action, the, we need to reset some, we need to make sure the hardware resource is quiet, which means no further actions in the hardware. And we also need to re reset the hardware MMI register and also some emulation resource for this virtual device. And as, as noted, we also we need to keep the passage for this idea unchanged because the device is still active. Oh, we, 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 we should, uh, after the device is used, we might release this device. So usually this, this, this comes with a, a closed syscall. And we need to respond to this action. We need to invalid the passage in hardware so that uh, all the or upstream request with this, this ADI will not come with the passage now. And we also need to reset the virtual device to ensure the no further activities on this hardware. We also need to clean up all the virtual device resource and allocate uh, after the device is open. So for the remove, if, if the device is no longer used, we need to remove this device from this file system entry. So to respond to this, this operation, the VDCM should remove the IMM device from virtual device and also it need to release the uh, interrupt resource from the active domain and also reset, release this, this uh, ADI and the associate uh, resource. And also we need to clean up any status associated with this virtual device. Okay, so we, we're still missing something. We still need to discover the scale driver capability and present this to the mediative core driver. So how does that happen? So firstly, the device should present the interior scale driver capability and the device driver with VDCM should detect this uh, capability and register this, the parent operations to the mediative core driver. And also we need to enable the IMU auxiliary domain so that the mediative core driver will register this system entry. In the, in, the, in the whole system. So that's all for me to, uh, to share with you how do we uh, enable a scale by way capable device driver in Linux. As we all know, there are some efforts uh, working on the, the VSV on top of uh, SRV solutions. So we also want to the same functionality for the scale by way. So I, 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 you will take over the introduction and share with you how do we enable the VSV on top of the scalable technology. So thanks. 
Uh, yeah, thanks for since um, great sharing on the Scala by capable device enabling. So next, I will talk about the SVA uh, support for uh, Scala by V. Um, so first, uh, I would like, I'd like to have a, a quick recap about uh, the shared water addressing. So it is a hardware feature uh, that allows uh, CPU and uh, device to share a uh, unified uh, IO, IO uh, address space so that uh, um, they can access and uh, share their uh, I.O. buffer. And uh, uh, has, uh, has uh, Scala V and SRV, uh, th uh, the only difference is the uh, granularity difference. So we uh, naturally want to have the same SVA support. And uh, in our community, we have already uh, done some uh, work for the SRIOV support. And uh, for Scala we we will um, we use uh, the generic uh, software changes. Um, since uh, Scala V and the SI uh, and the SVM, uh, SVA uh, is uh, both uh, based on the passive uh, uh, capability. Uh, uh, so there is some uh, difference for Scala V device to support uh, SVA, uh, SVA uh, uh, compared with the single root IOV. So next uh, we will uh, see uh, the difference. Uh, the difference is major uh, in the uh, hardware side. So uh, for a single root IOV device, uh, the uh, SVA transaction and the non-SVA transaction uh, and is differed by the uh, uh, with the passive and without the passive. But uh, for scalable IOV device, uh, since all, uh, all the transactions out from an ADI is uh, with uh, passive, uh, so this is a major difference, and uh, uh, we need, needed the VDCM to handle the difference. Okay, so um, as we mentioned, uh, VDCM needed to handle the passive difference to make uh, SV, uh, SVA work with Scala by V. So uh, the first one is where they come from. For example, the, the non-SVA passage uh, comes from the auxiliary domain, which is uh, allocated uh, when the, uh, the device is, uh, is attached uh, to an uh, auxiliary domain. And the second uh, is the SVA passage, uh, which is used uh, by SVA usages, and is, it is uh, uh, set from guest uh, software, and uh, this passage uh, uh, is from the IOME driver, which may be uh, allocated from a host driver uh, if the passive is uh, managed in the system uh, wide. Okay, so with the VTCM uh, to track the passivers, and it also needed to do some uh, switch for the, uh, for the ADI per guest operation, uh, like if enable uh, VSVA, uh, we need, uh, VDCM needed to uh, switch in uh, the SVA passage uh, to make sure uh, the, the, going, uh, the ongoing um, transaction is for SVA. And uh, if guest disable S, uh, VSVA, uh, it needed to switch out the SVA passage and uh, switch in the non-SVA passage. And also, uh, VDCM also needed to do uh, passage uh, drain and reset. When SVA is uh, SVA passive is freed, uh, um, and also if there is a uh, uh, passive switch, uh, it also needed to do a passive drain and reset to ensure uh, the, the passive in the hardware is well programmed. Okay, so with uh, VDCM manage the passive and uh, uh, the. And the uh, the following thing is how to expose uh, the SVA capability to guest. So VDCM needed to uh, compose the virtual device with SVA related capabilities, uh, like the uh, PCI Express passive capability, ATS, and the PRS capability. And uh, uh, before that, VDCM also needed to ensure uh, native software have already enabled uh, their uh, corresponding capabilities. And also, um, since uh, VDCM has exposed the PRS capability to, to guests, so uh, it also needed to help to handle the potential IOMU page fault, uh, which uh, may due to the uh, page, uh, non-present non page in guests. Uh, 
For example, VDCM needs to register for the handler to IME driver, which is introduced in the current uh, uh, SVA patch set. And also, it needed to notify user space client uh, like QEMU and further to notif inject uh, the get the fault uh, into guest. Okay, uh, with uh, this uh, work, uh, we can make Scalable IV work with SVA well. Okay, so uh, here is a summary for uh, uh, today's session. So uh, what we wanted to highlight is Intel Scalable IV uh, enforces DMA isolation at a passive granularity, which is more uh, uh, flexible and uh, scalable. And uh, uh, if you want to develop uh, VDCM for, uh, for the passive granularity DMA isolation, uh, capable, uh, capable technologies like uh, Intel Scalable IV, uh, you need to uh, make sure you are leveraging uh, existing mediated uh, device uh, framework for virtual device management. And also you need to uh, determine your virtual device uh, types uh, and also you need to organize your virtual device resource into sl slow paths and fast paths. And also you need to take, about, uh, take care about uh, the hardware uh, interrupt uh, like uh, uh, the IMS in, in entire Scalable IV. And also take care about the, the passive programming uh, like uh, uh, switch uh, the SVA passive and non SVA passive. And also uh, to support uh, the VSVA and uh, the uh, IOM page fault you need to let uh, VDCM to emulate uh, SVA capabilities and uh, handle the page faults. Okay, I think that's all for, the, uh, for today's sharing. Maybe any question? Yeah, it's welcome. Uh, yeah, well, uh, very nice topic. Uh, here you are talking about the scalable, like uh, how many virtual devices could support uh, for this device? Is there so this depends on hardware device, you know, design, yeah. So it's like just, just some design, not in your CPU yet? Yeah, you know, how many virtual devices, you know, the maximum unit should be passive, right? For passive, it's uh, 20 bits, 20 bits wide, so in theory we can create uh, one million virtual device, <laughs> yeah. So uh, then how, how many registers there, the, the size? Like you what register? The, uh? what, which kind of register? Like uh, you saw the VD... Uh, VD yeah. That so, uh, you know, the, the, how many the register numbers should be, you know, determined by the hardware as well, the device vendor as well. So if you, if you want to expose more registers to, to, uh, to the user space or to the virtual machine, so you, should, you, you will have more. Okay. Yeah. So just last question. Like, uh, how would it be compared with the G GPU today? Like your GVTG and the NVIDIA, their MDV platform, that part. Uh, sorry, GVTG. GVTG, your uh, is, okay. uh, GVTG is a uh, software uh, which uh, Sing mentioned uh, is a typical MDL. Uh, and for Scalable V is a uh, uh, hardware assisted uh, MDL uh, framework. Yeah. So, yeah. so in the hardware side, as we just highlight, in the hardware side, the VTD uh, enforced the DMA isolation capability at passive granularity. That's a very important difference. Okay, okay. thanks. Hi. Uh, <clears throat> uh, by the configuration of the I mean, ADIs and the way the communication is happening, it looks like um, there's no intercommunication between, say, for example, some of the ADIs can actually end up in the PF. The, the physical function, right? Yeah. Uh, being run in, inside the host, and some might actually end up directly into the, uh, assigned to the virtual machine itself. Yeah. So in today's SRIOV case, right, um, there could be certain scenarios in which basically the guests need to communicate with the host. Uh, say, suppose it's a network adopter, right? 
And inherently, you need to make sure, ensure that there is, there is certain kind of configuration which should be verified and say yes or no by the host itself before they can be configured, right? So actually, there is a need for a communication between the VF and the PF. And these days, you uh, basically we use the mailbox concept, which is a hardware mailbox. And any exchanges happen between the, the guest and the PF using that mailbox, right? So with this, the way the architecture of the ADIs and the composable VF is uh, there, so these are directly being assigned to the, either the guest or the host. So that means we have actually taken off the entire configuration path related to the, uh, the guest from the initial existing, the PFs, which we used to um, unbind them and then through the VFIO expose it to the, the guest directly. So now you can directly have the queues through uh, assigned to the, uh, the, the VF now, right? So the, 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 the lateral communication, one, and the communication between the guest and the host, that is missing. So, um, so there's a follow-up question to this as well. So that is a, on the above layer. So if you've got a SIROV, then you can also have a kind of a configuration at the hardware level, or not a configuration to the communication, where two virtual functions can communicate uh, as a kind of a peer-to-peer, -peer, or you can have even through, uh, uh, you can also have the PF-to-PF -PF kind of uh, communication. So if you've got multiple physical functions, and the way you can decompose the physical function to multiple uh, ADIs, can you have uh, intercommunication between a different ADIs belonging to different PFs as well? So if that is the case, the third final question is, is there a kind of a security issue which you, are, you have to take care of? Like you have an ATC in case of the PCI Express and the further configuration that ensures that whether to allow that or not, something like that. So, so many questions. So, uh, so actually, you, you are talking about the communication between a guest and a host, right? Yeah, the, the first one is, is yeah, yeah, you're right. So for the virtual device, you know, it, it doesn't have any configuration space. It share with the uh, share a, uh, configuration space with a PF, right? Yeah, so it doesn't have it right now. Yeah, it doesn't so, have. So what my question is, uh, in some of the configurations, say for example, the network configuration, right? So of the uh, guest, say for example, it's trying to configure a certain port, and uh, say it wants to configure a MAC address of the guest, right? Depending upon whether the VF is trusted or non-trusted, you might actually end up in allowing that configuration from the guest itself, right? Yeah, or you I, must- I, uh, Sorry, so, so I, I need to uh, uh, interrupt you. Actually, for the configuration space, I think we, what do I talk about the configuration space, which are shared with the PFA is a PCIe configuration space. But for the ADIF part, it has some uh, MML regions, just like I mentioned in, the, in, in one slide. We have divided it into two paths. One is slow pass, and the other is a, is a, is a fast pass. For, for the slow pass, the ML ADI could have some configuration and configure regions. This can be intercepted by the, by the VMM and emulated by the VDCM. Uh, okay, fine. So yeah. that is the PCI configuration, right? So uh, if I am understanding it correctly by this, I actually also read it from one of the, I think, uh, probably the patent file by the Intel uh, somewhere. Uh, it was written that we don't require a mailbox now after having this ADI composable VFs. So I don't know whether I'm correct in understanding that or not, or maybe. Yeah, so we, we probably we can talk offline. Yeah, okay, that's sure. fine. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you.